Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, Holy Week. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather together in this very important week in our lives, especially as we're going through this coronavirus, let us remember in a very special way those people that are sacrificing so that we can be saved. You were sent to heal with your tribe apart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us for the sin we have committed. Bring each one of us home to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that in our weakness we fail. We may be seen through the passion of the only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased. Upon whom I have put my spirit, he shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light, my life's salvation. The Lord is my light, my salvation. When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies them themselves stumble and fall. The Lord is my light, my life's salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then I will trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfume and oil, made from genuine aromatic nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of the disciples, and the one who would betray him, said, why was this oil not sold for 300 days' wages and given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used it to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, President Reagan uh, would always talk about that um, at times he had difficulty remembering, kind of like we all do. And he was at a White House reception, and, and here's something he, uh, he told 
this to the story. It seems that an 80-year-old man's golf game was hampered by his poor eyesight. He could hit the ball well, but he couldn't see where it went. So his doctor teamed him up with a 90-year-old man who had perfect eyesight and was willing to go along and serve as a spotter. Here's how the dialogue went after the 80-year-old man hit the first ball and asked his golfing companion if he saw where it landed. Yep, said the 90-year-old, I did see where it landed. Where did it go, the 80-year-old demanded. I don't remember, the 90-year-old replied. That's kind of like what we're kind of going through now, you know, there's things going on and we sometimes forget the important things in life. I was actually thinking about it the other day about the people that work in hospitals and uh, healthcare providers and, and, you know, of all types and hospital personnel and, and how they're doing so much and it seems like we really can't do much. They're doing uh, incredible, incredible work and we can never thank them enough for that or pray for them enough. But I, I remember uh, on retreat a number of years ago being given this story. And the story actually takes place about 35 or 40 years ago. There was a 15-year-old kid by the name of Doug who lived in Missouri. And Doug wasn't feeling well, and to make a long story short, his mom takes him to the doctors, and the doctors are they're pretty concerned about what's happening. They're not quite sure. So his mother takes him to a hospital in St. Louis, where they do all these tests on him, and they tell him, this 15-year-old kid, that he's got leukemia. Well, and they go in to explain to this young man about all the side effects of the treatments that are going to happen. He's going to lose his hair, he's going to be bloated, and all kinds of things like that. So obviously Doug goes into a depression. And so um, he, he's in the hospital in St. Louis. His aunt, who doesn't live in the area, calls a florist in St. Louis and explains the situation. Their 15-year-old nephew was fighting leukemia and that he wasn't, he was really down in the dumps, so she wanted to send him a bouquet of flowers. And she sends the flowers from this florist, Rick's florist, and the kid, Dougie, got the flowers, and he read the card from his aunt, and then inside the envelope was a second card. And the second card was from the girl that filled the order. And she said to him, Dear Douglas, I'm now 22 years old, I had leukemia when I was seven years old, and I'm doing really, really well. And according to the story, that little note changed his entire outlook on what he had to face. And when you think about it, it's interesting. Here's this kid surrounded with incredibly smart people, doctors and nurses with hundreds of years of experience. And at the time, there was the best technology available in this hospital. He was surrounded by all that, but it was a note from a girl making minimum wage that cared enough to get in touch with this young man and remind him the importance of not giving up. And it reminded me that we can do those things too. We can pick up the phone, we can write a note. We may not be able to do the things we normally did, but sometimes it's that note, it's that phone call that can make all the difference in the world. God bless. Let us now offer these petitions. For all people, that we follow the example of Mary and show our great love of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering with the virus and all sicknesses, may God help to comfort and heal them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health care workers and those people serving the public during this crisis, may they be blessed in their work, and may Almighty God keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those researching a cure for the virus, may their work be accelerated and blessed by Almighty God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering financially during this crisis, may they receive the help and assistance they need for themselves and for their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died from the virus or from all other causes, may they come to share in the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, may we always remember there's something we can do no matter how little it seems. It truly is important. And we thank you for this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to give you, which your earth has given and human hands have made and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God in prayer. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to give you, food of the vine, work with human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God in prayer. Friends, let's pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us fruit in eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is the right of justice. Father, that the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. So once again, we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by, sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop. Remember our loved ones whom you have called from this life to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, your central apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away 
the sin of the world bring us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed all those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy of thee you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, with ever watchful love. Let the Father hearts dedicated to you by me so that under your protection we may be kept safe for eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing continue to guide us on our journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everyone.